Oh no. I don't think you guys can hear me, right? Oh. My mic. Can you hear me? Hello? 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 I don't know why it's not working. My stream is scuffed sometimes. Let me see if you can hear me talking. Okay, yeah, you, you can hear me. It's just like the sound, like the, my mouth isn't moving right. <sighs> Hold on, let me turn this off. How is everybody? How do we think the gotcha is coming out? Maybe if I just close this entire thing and then start it back up again. Okay, it looks like it's working now. I'll close this again and then make it visible. Yay! That was scary for a second. I thought it wasn't gonna work because you know like last time some things weren't working and I got a lot more suggestions for audio sent for like sound alerts. So I'll have those ready by next week. For now, I'm going to go ahead and start G25 things and then wait for everyone to come in and then we can go ahead and do some gotcha. I think maybe Seraphic first and then save the cats for the end. I have this song stuck in my head because it was playing at work. Because right now at work, we don't have, like, the Wi-Fi isn't working for whatever reason. <gasps> Look at this cat! Look at that cat! Wow. Okay, I need to <laughs> focus. But I was saying, um, yeah, so we ran out of Wi-Fi. Like, it just stopped working. So we've been connecting, like, all of our phones to Bluetooth. And then just what whoever is playing something that we want. Then we just listen to their music for the day. So there I think the song is called Rockabye. Oh, I was like listening to that and I was like Phew. now it's in my head. So I got these little kitties. And I was thinking maybe I'm going to start singing again like uh, I used to have a music channel but you know I, I just didn't like it wasn't catching on so I just stopped but maybe I'll try again and like purely for fun this time because you know I'm doing this channel like for real for real for serious Make sure my staff isn't broken. Haha. -ha. 
Then we can go talk to Llewellyn for the event. I'm not the event. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, the event. I totally forgot about that. Like, the cats kind of... The cats were, like, the most important thing for me in that event. So let me go ahead and actually do that first. Let's see what that's about. I have not been doing that. Register main character with this person. Oh, wow, that's kind of far. Oh, the beach, I guess, port. So I can go Philia and then get a... Actually, Divine Knight, Six, Vespa, Volcano, Hot Springs. And then go to this mana tunnel right here. And then I'll be right at the event at this mana tunnel. Oh yeah, I was trying to do some more music things, but I just got bored. <laughs> because like here, you have to play like, you have to use those like bottles and then play like certain songs in certain locations. I really wasn't feeling that. That looks like Skull. But it isn't. Here. Creating melodies with empty bottles. This should be here somewhere. Okay, there. The textures. Why is nobody here? Is there really nobody here? But I'm on the right channel, right? This is channel one? Okay. Contemplate. I should talk to- oh, oh, a bear. Should we have somebody named Hagarl or something? Okay, so it's over there, like closer to the bridge over here. There. Hey there, thanks for taking the time out of your day to make the trip here. This metallurgy site may be remote, but that's what makes it the perfect, the perfect place to get away from it all. As you can see, I'll be running a humble little drink stand here for the next four weeks. You should go stop by each day to try my latest cocktail and enjoy your vacation similar to the coffee event. Are you sure you want to send it? Yes. If you choose this person as your main character and no longer participates that main character, good call. We all need a little more relaxation in our lives. What fun is, is it to live life like you're being chased by a tiger? I hope you're able to take the load off here and rest. I've taken the liberty of setting up incentives to help you rest and recuperate. Nothing will be breaking a sweat over, of course. You just have to log in every day, hang out for the Aaron Link day, and do the <laughs> imagine saying Earth Link day, and do your daily quest. Simple, right? Let me elaborate on that. See, you can use the vacation coins that you earn as rewards from consecutive and total logins to buy things in my vacation shop. I've got some nifty gifties, <laughs> so feel free to take a gander anytime. You can also get these coins from completing your daily shadow mission. On top of that, I have even I even have a special a special vacation coin for your number of consecutive logins is a multiple of seven or ten. It's worth your while to keep an eye on the number, I'd say. 
I've also got a scented bear beach ball tropical resort sun hat for each of the days when you reach 15 to 21 of total logins respectively. Was that too much? Don't think about it too hard. Just show up every day, stick around for at least 36 minutes, and clear your daily mission. And as a special thanks for visiting me, I'll hook you up with a different magical hocktail every day, along with a vacation box. So don't forget to swing by, okay? Hello, Skull! I'm doing the event now. It seems exactly like a coffee event. Is this guy glowing? It looked like he had flashing dye on his skin. That was kind of freaky for a second. And hello, Alphonse! Sir Alphonse. Oh, and, uh, um, uh, uh, uh. and being the gent I am, I already gave you today's cocktail of the day and a vacation box. Give them a try later. Whatever you do, remember to have fun out there. Today is a new event. Oh, we all kind of look weird. I guess because of the desert, air, desert light. So it's basically the coffee event. How are you guys today, Skull and Alphonse? I am not doing any shadow mission. Just like period, I just don't do shadow mission. But let me open this box. Imagine if I get something cute. Okay, an 18 age potion. Until noon the following Saturday in real time. Martini. doing pretty well. That's wonderful. So it looks like, yeah. So I'll go ahead and do G25. Do you guys want to open one of the cats right now? <laughs> the cat box thing? Should we do a little bit of Seraphic? Just one while we wait for some more people to come in. Cause I'm like so curious, like I really want a cat. <laughs> One is nice. Okay, let's go. Thank you for indulging me. <laughs> Do it. Oh, push me like I want a cat. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> Use. Dragon, okay. That's alright, that's alright. I'm gonna do one seraphic. What? Name change. Okay. Nothing special, but maybe it'll be at the end of stream. The dragon is pretty okay. Hi, Mikey! Tragic dragons are not cute. Or, yeah, tragic dra dragons are not cats, in fact. Yes. That is true. Seeing everyone enjoying themselves was like, was pretty cool, but it's, I'm not sure how I feel about all this sensitive feely stuff. Did you get to talk to a lot of people? This meeting was arranged on short notice. It's a pity not everyone could come, but I'm glad to see how eager and hardworking the squires are. Agreed. It kind of takes you back, doesn't it? We should definitely do this more often, Commander. Oh, I... You think so too, right, Kathleen? Mm-hmm. Right? I knew the squires would appreciate it, but I'm glad to hear you enjoyed yourselves too. We should clear some space in the schedule so we can make these discussions a regular occurrence. But now that we've wrapped up here, Commander, it appears to be time for you to return to your regular duties. I'm sure Llewellyn has made it vividly clear that you have many more matters left to attend to. Yeah. If you don't remember what duties still require seeing to, I'd be more than happy to go over them with you again. Oh, oh no, no, that's really not necessary. Alton declines Llewellyn's offer, perhaps a little too quickly. The look on his face is depressing to watch. Oh, oh no. Well, as much as I'd hate to be done with our time together, I know the squires have to get going. Please return to the gate and check in with Sean to confirm the status of your scheduled meeting. I'll escort them to the gate as precautionary measure. Things may have died down now, but it wasn't so long ago that our knights were ambushed. Eh, it's, it's only a stone's throw from here to the gate. I bet the trips goes by in a blink of an eye if we chat while we're walking. Guys, Finny was just about was just talking about how important it was to take proper precautions. He said Squire should avoid traveling on their own whenever possible. He was probably 
pretending to pay attention while daydreaming about another of his weird fantasies. Oh yeah, that sounds like something Dai would do. Ugh, of course that's what he did. At this point, I'm not even surprised. What the heck? And you too? I can't believe you think so little of me. Just pipe down. Uh, I hate to say it, but everyone's staring at us. Here we go. Evelyn lets out a massive sigh. She squeezes her eyes shut and takes a long, deep breath. When she did, when she, what? When she at last opens her eyes again, she assumed a, the normal, unruffed look you most commonly see her wearing. Kana is right. Due to the safety concerns related to the recent ambush, it's better for you to be accompanied by an official knight, even if you're traveling as a group. Follow me, everyone. Commander, you're free to start in your next item on your schedule. I'll rejoin once I've seen the squires to the gate, so don't run off somewhere else. It was great to have the chance to get together like this. Perhaps, if fortune is kind, we'll see one another again near the gate. But until then, I bid you farewell. Avalyn nods, smiling ever so slightly as she beckons the squires to follow, then strides off towards Avalon Gate without missing a beat. The squires all say their goodbyes to you one by one as they shuffle off after Avalyn. I suppose it's time for us to get back to our our own missions too. You're right. I'm sad it's over, but we still need to check in on the status of the other members. Ophany, oh, before you return to the El unit, there's something you and the commander need to discuss. You see, in the process of recovering your divine light, some of the knights. Lolan approaches Finney and explains the relevant details in a rapid whisper. Um, it was nice to spend a few hours together like this. I'm sorry we have to part ways now, but duty calls, I suppose. After speaking with Talvish, I think it. I've been able to sort through a lot of the concerns that had been on my mind. To be fair, I have some questions and want of answers. To be fair, I have some questions oh, and shoot. want of answers. I have some <laughs> I had my sound on for a second. To be fair, I still have questions. Okay. Especially given that the ones could fairly say what? Especially given that one could fairly say Hamrick is the god who has most closely inherited the will of Anton Semeni. Sometimes I wonder if she just wants to see what kind of choices we'll make going forward. Regardless of what her true intent may be, it's undeniable that we've been given a chance to see our values of discipline and guardianship hold up. I've thought about what I did every, every angle, from every angle, and honestly, I don't regret the actions I took. I'm well aware that I broke some of our oldest creeds, and that the aftermath of my choices may end up causing difficulty for others down the line. But no one can deny that sometimes. You have to make a truly drastic choice if you wish to protect something. Whatever else I may be, my faith, my will, my determination are unshakable, and by the will of Anton Semeni, I'll protect all that I can. I hope you will be there to watch me all the way, and I promise I'll be there for you whenever you need help. No matter how much time passes by or how old I'll get, I'll remain steadfast in that commitment. Nod your head, beam with pride. Ooh, ooh. I'm gonna beam with pride, cause like, yeah. Thinking back on how Altum rose to the position of commander fills you with pride, you give him a broad, shining smile. He's like, why aren't you responding? Oh, uh, did I say something weird again? But I said exactly what I wanted to say. I even practiced how I'd say it. Oh. <laughs> He's like a puppy. Well, you still understood what I meant, right? I suppose it's time for me to get back to my jam-packed schedule. Are you quite finished? I've been waiting for quite a while, Commander. As soon as Altum goes quiet, Llewellyn's disgruntled voice cuts through the air in a brief opening afforded to him. Oh, Llewellyn, I thought you were talking to Finney. I was, but we con concluded our conversation a while ago. I did notice, however, that your own chat was running a bit long again, so I spent some time considering how we might most effectively work through the task on your schedule. But if we leave right now, such a high-intensity solution may not prove necessary. Um, I was just telling her how everything we've gone through has really strengthened my resolve. Wait. As he enthusiastically calls, once again, Altum extends his hand towards you. Before you're really sure of what's happening, you, you, re you reach out and take Altum's hand, wondering if perhaps a handshake is what he had in mind. You can feel the rough calluses on his palms 
earned through hours of rigorous training. What's going on? Are you hitting me? <laughs> oh, this crab! This crab! Oh! Oh my goodness! And Altum just stood there. In fact, he turned to look at me. <laughs> this crab! Altum, help me! Before you're really sure what's happening, you reach out and take Altum's hand, wondering if he's running. He's really not. <laughs> Exclamation mark, like, he's watching me get beat up by this crab. Hehe. <laughs> there we go. You should probably- Huh? That should be more than enough to tide me over until our next meeting. Well, guess it's time for, for me to get back to business. See you around. Where does he think he's going? I suppose I'll be taking my leave here as well. I'm sure that given your frequent appearances at the Royal Castle, our paths will cross again sooner- Sooner than not. Oh, and remember, we still have our long postponed to tea time to look forward to. I'll send a formal invitation your way. <laughs> Mikey, you're laughing at this crab beating me up? <laughs> and that was beating up my star. Ha. Hee <laughs> hee, we better, we better get going or we'll, we'll be late. See you later. Finny, I'm headed over to check. Why are none of them doing anything? Finny, I'm heading over to check in with a group that that just came back from patrol. Stay vigilant. I can tell almost immediately when you enter the sanctuary, so feel free to come visit if you're in the area. Everyone comes to say their goodbyes before starting to head out. Right. And then we recently got the scented bears too. Like this item turns, where's the item? Oh, here it is. The portable diffuser turns all spiders into bears. So they call it like arachnophobia mode. So if you don't like to see spiders, you can just use that item and it turns them all into cute tiny bears. And that's fairly new too. And then people are getting voice acting lines now too. And look, look, the hair physics. We didn't have this before. Like this was not a thing. Your hair did not move when you walked. Like I can even show you an example with like literally just taking off my wig. Look, this hair is long too and it doesn't move at all. Like, this is new. So that's why I'm wearing this hair. I just love it because of the physics. Bear phobia. <laughs> do, you have, do you have bear phobia? While subtle changes like that breathe life into the game. Right. Oh my gosh. Like, I felt some type of way <laughs> when I saw this wig. Like, I was like, oh, it's, it's cute. It's nice. It's a nice wig. And then I moved and then saw the, mm, it just does it for me. And we recently got fingers too. Do you guys remember when we didn't have fingers? <laughs> like that was hilarious. I wonder if, what happens if you, yeah, we have fingers now, but before it used to just be like Play-Doh hands. Let me find like an example of like the gloves that just, look, see, these are gloves, but look, our hands look so bulky in them, like incredibly bulky. <laughs> and that was just how it was. It, it was just like that. Every every glove was like that. But now, look. Look how bulky this is. <laughs> but like if you look into like the newer gloves at the end of the glove like the end of the glove thing. This is surprisingly still bulky. Let me check further down. Something like this. Like these. These are a pretty good example, I think. See how the individual fingers? Bears are scary. Oh no! Is this not the core team I'm supposed to be talking to? I wasn't expecting to see you so soon. Courting sighs and disapproval, her gaze drifting between you and the empty room, implying a certain someone's absence. Oh, do you miss Enya? Or whatever her name was? Etain? Even if the masses aren't familiar with her likeness, it's only a matter of time before word gets out that Etain is the Pontiff of Limerick. Have you any idea what the uproar you caused when you collapsed out, of, out in the field? In order to get you and your suspicious looking friend past the royal castle guards, her holiness has, was forced to reveal her identity to everyone present. Thank you so much for the lurk, Ronnie, and thank you so much for the stretch and the hydrate. It reminds me of the Fire Emblem games when they didn't model the feet. Right, we still don't have modeled feet. If I'm being honest, we kind of have potato feet. <laughs> I just chose not to, <laughs> not to talk about that 
but yeah, we do have potato feet. Like, some of the shoes look good, but I'll show you when we remove the shoes. I fully understand it was Her Holiness's own choice to venture into the outside world, and I had already braced myself for what that could mean. Oh, let me hydrate. I forgot about that. I just read it, and I forgot about it. <laughs> Water is always so nice. But the thing, the last thing I wanted for us was to gossip. Uh huh. But the last thing I wanted was for such gossip to spread through the royal castle. I shudder to even think of the inevitable problems this will lead to. Do you want to? Assi do you want to assist me? I need to do the Guardian of Avon hard. Let's go. A number of faithful. Uh, among, a number of the faithful, their curiosity peaked, have been visiting the Pontus Court with increasing frequency, drawn here, no doubt, by the rumors of her holiness. There's only so much Pentecost and I can do to persuade them, and it wouldn't be proper to send the Temple Knights to reign in the general populace. And while all of that was going on, her holiness just happened to emerge from the underground sanctum. Indeed, she could not have chosen a worse moment. Thankfully, she is so good at slipping away that- uh, uh I ask that you forget I said that. On my way? Nice. And you're a pass-making expert. Okay, Skull. Okay. <laughs> Courtine frowns and arches one eyebrow, looking toward you. She already left the Pontus Court. Or rather, it would be more accurate to say that she ran off. She's been gone for almost the whole day now. If I leave again, I know the people will come crowding back. Calling out to the Temple Knights would be too conspicuous. And too difficult for Pentecost to take pers action personally. As much as it pains me to admit, you're the only one I can turn to. Would you find her holiness? I doubt she has left Tara at the very least. If there's anyone her holiness will be willing to, willing to speak to, it would be you. So I entreat you, please help us find her. You detect a hint of desperation in Cortine's otherwise dry voice. She lowers her head in a deep bow, then slowly rises to her full height once more. But if I had to guess, I'd start searching near the river, overlooking the city. She always liked watching the surf surface of the water sparkle in the light. I hope that's of some help as you search for her holiness. Now if you'll excuse me. Once Gortine has said all she wished to say, she resumes reorganizing the room with the aloofness you come to expect from her. You need to find Enya somewhere in the Tara. According to Gortine, it's likely that you'll find her along the riverside somewhere. On my way, I'll sit AFK and look pretty. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. All right, let's go to Avon. Oh, I can't use the item indoors, fine. <laughs> oh, but let me show you our potato feet. <laughs> so it's great we have fingers and everything, but we still have these potato feet. <laughs> Look, no, no toes. <laughs> and then, this is still with the, um, outfit. Look, look. <laughs> we have to lines where our toes should be. Oh, Skull is here. He's a kitty too! He was ready for this. He was absolutely ready. Babysitter, the Star of Dawn. Who's that? Do you know them? Why are you walking up to them? <laughs> Mikey! Give me your kitty. Give it to me! Just kidding. I was so focused on your outfit, it took me a while to notice the toes, right? Do you have- oh, we need to get the pass, right? You need Guardian of the- uh, Guardian of Avon Hard? Let's go! I need to find a sheep. There's one. There's a few! How do people trap them in the corners? There's one in the corner. That's good. It can't move, right? From here?
this is my Christmas sword. See the little snowman? You can't really tell with his hair, but yeah, there's definitely a snowman there. I also, I actually might have some passes in my bank. Let me check that as well. Because I do save some of these papers because I don't like clutter. Like, if you guys know me, I don't like clutter at all. <laughs> so I, whenever I have, like, extra, I'll save them somewhere. Your attempt to gather failed miserably. Lucky bonus. Oh, I should use these. There needs to be, like, a... Oh. There needs to be a pet that you can, um... Not a pet, a doll that picks up pages. Wouldn't that be cute? Like this guy, like Marlo, or whatever his name is, this one. And then he picks up the pages for you. That'd be cute. And honestly, we have, we have dolls for everyone. Does, a mo does someone, can someone tell me if the Shakespeare dolls exist? Got sheep shearing. You got shearing sword? Okay, do you want to take over? What is? I didn't even know that was. I didn't even know you could get Excalibur out. I thought that was just decoration. <laughs> I'll heal you. Dang, you don't want to be healed. Oh, I was trying to figure out what this is, but it's a cocktail. Does Harvest Song help here? La, 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 la. Singing was also... Oh. I don't remember when singing was introduced, but that wasn't introduced bass. Like, that was not a base thing. Wait. Hunter! Hunter, Hunter! Hunter! I did it before you. Hello? Mm, 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 mm. We're waiting to get some of these guardian passes. Let me actually try to check if I have some in Dunbarton. Oh, you got them? Where'd the sheep go? Sheep burnt. Oh, the paper, because they're made out of paper. I forgot that. That sounds dark when you say it like that, though. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Oh my goodness. It's ridiculous. Say silver. I don't have enough for silver. Gold. I don't have enough for gold. We need guardians of Avon Hard, right? I can try one time. Guardian of Avon Heart? Wait, hold on. I didn't even know you could... I, I definitely have more, so I'm going to go to Dunbarton and then try. Because I have some in the bank. Another friend of mine has a purple one I gave her, and I saw people using it, and I'm so happy. Oh, that's wonderful. You are a trendsetter. <laughs> the face. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I activated final hit. I didn't even mean to. Oh, are you chasing me? Okay. I thought this 
person was Mikey for a second. I'm just like watching people in the chat. Jiggly buff, I will bully you with love. So here are all my passes. Papers. Here's a faded play paper. Silver play paper. Gold play paper. Yeah, I, I have enough for a try. So back to Avon. dance to anything okay like him wouldn't he be a cute doll bag and then he picks up page paper the the, the 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 play pages it's raining it's raining raining oh baby it's raining raining <gasps> pink rain Guardian of Avon Hard. We're gonna try just one page because it might just work the first time. I don't know why it's typing two. I just want one. Okay. Have you seen, have you been hit by lightning? What kind of question is that? Oh, I failed because you look stunning. <laughs> Goodness, <laughs> Mikey. <laughs> Yay, we got Guardian at Valon Hard. Hi. Are you gonna respond? Have you been struck by lightning? <laughs> Have you? I'm curious now. No. It reminds me of that pickup line. It's like, did you fall out? <laughs> did it hurt? Did it hurt when you fall out of heaven? Kitty. Euphoria. <laughs> Are we ready? This will be easy, honestly. I'm not even worried. What? Hold on, somebody's selling a Siamese cat. Are we ready? Are we ready to clown around with Luna and Molly, a clown and her dolly on the big comfy couch? <laughs> Do you guys know that? <laughs> um, Skull said, are you ready to clown around? And that was the first thing I thought of. <laughs> are you ready? You know, I did like a deep dive on that's the show, The Big Comfy Couch. There's a lot to talk about with The Big Comfy Couch. There's actually like a whole person who does like documentaries and stuff about like random stuff and that was one of them. Oh, I've just realized that Mikey's using alchemy. Are you getting ready for that arcana? I use it for crumbs. Oh, skull too. How are you doing today, Hunter? With Luna and Molly, a clown and her dolly on the big comfy couch look at this pretty rain huh oh 
Oh, he's speaking. <laughs> that was one of the trolls. I was like, what are you talking about? We found out my aunt is coming to visit. Oh, is that a good thing? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes family can be a little bit rough. That would be fun for me, though. My fault for not knowing since she called the other day and I was asleep. Oh, dear. Oh, she's visiting, like, right now, currently. She's cool? Nice. I'm struggling to finish the massive bowl of pasta I made. Cher, you're jealous of my shoes and gloves or Mikey? Because mine, mine are the blanded shoes, so you must be talking to, to Mikey. Uh, way too much. Noodle pa, pa noodle palooza. It's never too much. You can save it for a dinner. Or mail it to my house. One, two, three, Candy Lane Drive. <laughs> Drury Lane. Or maybe the 100 Acre Woods. Oh, they finished it during the cutscene. Wow. They finished it and opened the chest. <laughs> Are these mine? You're welcome. <laughs> it was fun. <sighs> when I see Mikey's cat, I want my own cat. <laughs> was the grind long Mikey for shoes and gloves? 100%. You know Mikey is buff, beefy. Cassettia shoes was a reforge. Get city of loves. Watch Mikey say that was like the first run they did. <laughs> Here you go. Slaps down massive pile of noodles. Some somehow my pile seems even bigger than before. Ma Maya pasta. No, I had them a long time already. I'm jealous. Just started out. I see you had them, but you just didn't use them for a while. Skull is like, mm. <laughs> pasta. Yes, I want pasta so bad. Oh, casually just starting. <laughs> With a gear and erg forty-five. Erg forty-five. Goodness gracious. Erg makes me go erg. Ooh. <laughs> Crom is needed. You are needed, Mikey. We need you. Absolutely. Hmm. I'm gonna try another. Oh, they didn't let me use it. Wish me luck. I'm going to try one more Seraphic for now. Another name change. Beautiful. We love to see it. <laughs> Ooh. Names. Change name. The color name thing. Alright, I'll go back to Tara then. Game telling you. No, my name is 
perfect, beautiful, stunning. Rebecca828 plus Rory. Is the color change thing. But should we change my color? I'm pink right now, but that doesn't match my outfit. Blue. Let's do blue. Ta da. I think the darker blue would have been better, but this is okay. The game telling you. <laughs> my name is just beautiful the way it is. I will never let go of my Rory. So she's somewhere by the river. So I can only assume like, I wonder if I can just Enya or attain the NPC check. And attain, okay no. It's not popping up under the name change thing. The the NPC search. So she just should be around here. Don't change for anybody. Do hydrate though. Okay, thank you. I didn't see a hydrate. Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much for the hydrate. Hi, Jay Earl. Hi, Jay Earl. HM. Oh, there she is. HM1 something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hee <laughs> hee. I knew it was you the moment I heard your footsteps. Are you like a cat? You can tell my footsteps? Interesting. Quarantine's gotten wise to me. If she'd been the one to come looking, I would have hidden away even longer. But instead, she sent you. Anya slowly opens her eyes, looking up at you, then turning her gaze back down to the river flowing below. Her long, silken hair... <laughs> ...sways gently in the breeze. See how the light scatters and dances across the water? It's like thousands of glittering jewels all tumbling along. With the Order of the Black Moon finally defeated, Erin is safe once more, and the Pontiff of Limerick will have to go back to her old life. Can I tell you something? Do you remember when I told you about my vision and said that I had foreseen something dangerous happening? The truth is, I was downplaying it. What I actually saw in my dreams was far more horrendous than I wished to let on. In my vision, I saw you. You were there, standing at the center of an all-consuming blaze. That was why I stubbornly pushed my way into the expeditionary force. I wanted to prevent that from happening, though I didn't know how. I even resolved that I'd take the responsibility of dealing with you myself. If you were ever, if you were, if you ever became like I saw in my dream. And I'm so, so thankful it never came to that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be standing here chatting like this. Still, even if I saw you descend into madness like that, with all we'd been through together leading up to that, I don't know if I would have been able to do it. As I traveled with you, I came to understand what kind, what a kind and trustworthy person you are. I saw. I saw how so many people from all sorts of different backgrounds were united in their belief in you. Seeing that stood out to me as proof of all the meaningful relationships you've made in your time here. And when I realized that, I actually felt a little envious. I suppose in a sense, what I lack is confidence. Sure, I may be devout, but when you get right down to it, I'm mostly just lucky. What have I ever done that would merit such love and blessing from Limerick? Even if I weren't around, Quarantine and Pentecast would still be there to serve the people. The only place I'm really needed is the underground sanctum. And even then, all I'm good for is enkindling holy flames and pr and offering prayers. I wonder if the crowd at the Pontus Court has dispersed by now. I just felt so overwhelmed by the sight of all those people before I knew what I was truly doing. I had already run off. How can I hold my head high in front of all those believers when this is the way I really feel inside? Oh! Thank you. <laughs> Although I feel threatened now. <laughs> like someone... <laughs> like I said, the blessings I've received weren't due to any great personal virtue, just sheer luck. That's why, when I chose to follow in the footsteps of my predecessors, I made a decision that I would live only for my duty and nothing more. After all, there were so many in the world who des more desperate or more deserving than me. 
yet for some reason I was chosen above any of them. And because of that, how I feel doesn't really matter. A shadow settles over Enya's face. Wait quietly. There's no need to deny your true feelings. I'm gonna say that. Hey. <laughs> what is this emote? Let me see. It's a little dog. It's cute. It's cute. It's like a little chicken. You can tell her that being in a position where she has to take care of so many others is is inevitable that she'll feel the burden of their responsibility but even so there's no reason to no you're hitting me it's okay yeah that hair face you tell her that being in the position where she has to, to care for so many other people it's inevitable that she'll feel the burden of that responsibility but even so, there's no reason to die, deny her honest feelings. You really think so? It's such a relief to hear you, hear that, especially from you. I wondered before whether, with all the expectations that people place on you, you've ever felt the same way. Her tense expression grows softer as she smiles gently at you. Oh. <laughs> I did a lot of self-reflecting when I traveled with you and the expeditionary course. I wondered if what I'd been doing doing up until then was truly what Limerick wanted. Besides having been shown so much, there I was again, hiding behind Cortine and wallowing in my little corner of the sanctum. I wonder if perhaps it would have been better if I ventured out into the, wo the world sooner. I could have helped so many more people if I had. I spent my days agonizing over why I had been chosen, all the while neglecting what I really should have been doing. When I look back, I was just dwelling on the past, looking for an answer that didn't really matter anymore. I wonder if Limerick pitied me when they saw that. <laughs> I guess pity might be a nice way of putting it. If I were in Limerick's place, I probably would have wanted to grab me by the shoulders and shake some sense into me. Anya smiles, bittersweet, but she looks relieved. I've decided that I'm not going to hide it anymore. I'm so excited. <laughs> no, I just can't hide it. Drops fork. <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy next week there's definitely going to be more sound alerts since I got recommendations. But still, send me any recommendations that you guys want for sound alerts. It could be fun. I know I still have a long way to go, but at the very least, I won't be making any more excuses to avoid facing the challenges I need to face. That's probably that's probably what Coratine wants as well. Though, well, hi, Mikey. Though she hadn't said so outright, she would have. She wouldn't have prepared such magnificent formal wear for me otherwise. This is formal? Like, I'm confused. Like, why do you think this is formal wear? Like, it's cute. I love it, but it's not formal. Imagine walking into a church like that. <laughs> or even like a wedding. Like, it's just not formal attire. Or go to a job interview dressed, like, dressed in this. Okay, I'm starting to think I talked your ear off long enough. I shouldn't be keeping the kingdom's hero indisposed for so long. Enya stretches, craning her arms over her head. From now on, instead of hiding away in the underground sanctum, I've decided to start getting used to dealing with the public myself. Oh, before I forget, I found an- I had an extra one of these left over. Back when we were sealing the rifts, I guess I figured it was better to- better- huh? Better to be safe than sorry. This isn't modern times, Becca. Isn't it though? It's just, it's, it's modern, just fantasy. But still, would you come go to a wedding dressed in this? They have weddings in Mabby too. How is it not modern time though? Do they have phones? Yes, we literally have phones. We literally have phones and computers. <laughs> and you hand something to you. It's. When I get back to Tara and started unpacking my things, there it was, burning bright as ever. Those... And even this outfit, do you think this is historical? What you're wearing? Or even what I'm wearing? This is not historical fashion. <laughs> this is modern fashion. Our crossovers. <laughs> to be fair, I'd left my homies all wear armor to a wedding. <laughs> When I get back to Tara and started unpacking my things, look, my boy even has a microphone. Len has a microphone here. He has a whole headset. 
<laughs> when I get back to Tara and started unpacking my things, there was burning bright as ever. I can enkindle a new flame whenever I need to, so I wanted you to have this one. Though there are many people who can be capable of wielding this, and, um, well, I wanted you to have it. Think of it as a souvenir of our time together. Enya smiles somewhat bashfully as a rosy tinge spreads across her cheeks. Just then, an owl flies over your head, dropping a letter on the ground before you. Oh my, I think it's for you. I suppose I should be going myself. I don't want to give Corotine any more reason to scold me. Come visit the Pontus Court sometime. Regardless of how busy things there may become, I'm sh quite sure that the Pontus would still make time to see you. <laughs> Having said all she wished to say, Enya adopts her usual serene expression as she readies herself to return. You should read the letter that Owl just delivered. See? Crossovers. But this outfit, this isn't a crossover, and this is definitely not historical. Like, look, even the mesh and the... I don't even think Elemental Harmony is historical. Yeah, look at all this shoulder. This No, this will get me... This will get me in trouble. Like, th th you don't wear this. <laughs> Historically, this isn't accurate. It's a fantasy world. The gotcha. That's not just crossover though. I mean like I'm pretty- everything comes from gotcha, like most things come from the gotcha. Oh, thank you for the flame. Can be stored in special inventory, okay. My special inventory is full though. I can just imagine a bunch of people in full armor. Look at things that can be crafted. In game only. Okay, let me get a sewing kit. Wait, I don't have a sewing kit though. <laughs> Not even, like, I don't have a pattern to, like, check. But, like, Enya's outfit isn't historical either. Like, nobody's wearing historical outfits. Using sewing machine? I don't have a sewing kit. Not with me, anyway. I don't- I don't remember who has my sewing kit. I think maybe my shopping cart? I don't- I don't have a shop- uh, sewing kit. Not a machine. But even still, gotcha is a huge part of this game. You can't just limit it to what you create here. Like, create, like, crafting-wise. Like, even this, this outfit, I can't wear it. It's super old, it's like literally on the first page. It's not historical either. This, sleeveless and bell bottoms, no. Monger, I don't know if this is historical, maybe it is. Like, some of it's historical, sure, but not all of them. I think it's safe to say that it's not historical, but fantasy. Somewhere in between modern and historical. Because, like, Enya is part of the game, the base game. Everybody sees her, just by doing G25, even if you're completely free to play. <laughs> Mikey's not happy. <laughs> to the dungeon! <laughs> But I do love Enya. A tightly sealed envelope made of the same sta stationery used by the royal family. It must be from Marled. A name- why? <laughs> Is it because Mikey's in my party? I'm sorry, Mikey. Wait, before I read it- Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah.
scandalous closing? <laughs> yeah, literally. If it was historical, Enya would be in trouble. And she's supposed to be a holy person. <laughs> Inside is a large sheet of stationery containing only two lines penned in her uti utilitarian script. There's something I need to discuss with you immediately. I apologize for the short notice, but please meet me at the gateway to Tekton. You're taken aback by the... The I don't even know that word of message. Even for Marley, I'd, the matter really only... What? The matter really must be quite urgent. You turn the stationery over to see if there's anything written on the back, but there isn't. Fantasy, his, history, sense, magic. It's 100% fantasy. And there are definitely some historical elements, but you cannot tell me that Enya is not. Like, she's not historical. Like, period. Like, that would not fly. <laughs> it looks like you have to meet with some, her in person. You'll learn what this is about once you reach the gateway to Tekton. <laughs> Which... But she kind of is. Like, if you think about what that word is, like, magic-related, most of us have magic. Just, like, out and about, like, this is my hailstorm. They're not here. At the entrance of Tektun. Okay, I guess inside. Bikini armor and fantasy. Okay. Okay, I I'm willing to accept that because bikini armor is a thing. I kind of want to talk to Piran. Does he say anything? Yee! Wow, you sure got here quick. He's been waiting for you. Ooh, this. I like this. Hold on. Can I? I wonder if I can replicate. <laughs> um. I do know what it's about, but you really should hear it directly from her and not from me. Oh, one more thing. He draws closer to you, staring intently, then whispers in, into your ear. Did you pass on the book that I, like I asked you? Ah, thank you. A hint of sadness briefly flashes across his face, but he quickly re regains his cheery demeanor. Do you have any other business? If not, I was, it was a pleasure talking to you as always. It's always a pleasure talking with you. All right, then. I'll see you next time. The end of your conversation with Piran. The crest of the kingdom. Blah, 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 blah. I'm glad to see you've come. There you are. She's been waiting for you. As you approach, you're greeted by her, who appears rather anxious than usual, and by Piran, who looks just as upbeat as ever. First, allow me to apologize. I should have attended to you more closely during your recover recovery, but I had to take my leave due to an urgent matter requiring my attention. Piran was the one who told me. But you are aware that Muriel and Butter have received permission to stay here for the time being? Thanks to their presence here, I was able to take some extra time for a more in-depth discussion with Her Majesty. There were certain things that I wasn't able to follow up on in detail while working with the Expeditionary Force. One would, after all, be hard-pressed to serve as a personal escort and patrol detect an area at the same time. So the reason I called you here is for to see her struggle to get her words out. Her aqua blue eyes quiver with uncertainty as she grapples of how to say what she wants to. She's like looking completely down on me. <laughs> she will understand. Her majesty did. Even if it did take a while for her to come around. Hmm. Well, there's something I need to tell you. I wanted to say it later in my letter, but when I went to write it down, I found it so difficult to put into writing. Perrin, they'll be returning soon, right? They sure are. And there'll be other soldiers here too, so you don't have to worry about security. In that case, would you mind joining me in Tekton? I think it'd be easier to explain once we're there. We'll venture for the Geta as soon as you're ready. She seems to have regained her usual calmness, but you can still hear a slight trembling in her voice. What is it that she wants to show you? Head towards the Tekton Geta, like she suggested. Mikey! Oh, I thought I saw Mikey just run by. Is that my imagination? Yes, Mikey's right there. <laughs> okay, so now we walk into the Tekton. Oh, 
I don't see. Somewhere around here, I saw Mikey head and center. Yes, right there. Oh my goodness. Why is it so hard? You place your hand on the gata that leads to Tecton. She seems nervous as she approaches you, looking back and forth between you and the Geta. She nods her head as if telling you it will be alright to enter. Enter Tecton. You got this. Why? Why this face? I was not afraid until you just put that face. <laughs> I wanted to tell you sooner, but you were still recovering and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Her Majesty also felt like it would be best to take care of this matter quickly and quietly so as to not give any rise to rumors. Honestly, just trying to process everything I was feeling was rather overwhelming for me. She's staring at you, looking uncertain. She clearly is having some difficulty finding the right words to express what she feels. It hasn't been all that long since I told Muriel about her and Perrin about this. I was, I was surprised to see Perrin take it so calmly. He could have been easily upset with me, but he wasn't. And now there's you. I really don't have a clue of what you'll think of it, and frankly, I'm not, e not even sure where to start. It's 100% about Seth and then probably her leaving the expeditionary force to like help Seth do something. Like, I'm not even worried. <laughs> but it's time I told you. You have the right to know. After all her hesitation and fumbling with words, she finally turns to you, a resolute look in her eyes. But just as she does... Huh? The mist. The fasciata is thickening. Stay close to me. The hand that Muriel stretches out towards you is suddenly obscured in the swirling mist. As you draw a long breath, cool, moist air fills your lungs. It might be better to wait for the surging mist to recede before you try to look around. Suddenly, you sense the movement of creatures that dwell in the mist. You don't seem to, you don't seem to be too many. Huh? There don't seem to be too many of them, so it would be best to defeat them quickly. Let's go. The blue slime is immune to this, right? Oh no, it's not. <laughs> That's cute. I'm not worried about these guys. Mikey's like, just you wait. <laughs> the most annoying ones are these like, tarlum, whatever these are. Cause they roll around and beat you up. The all bonus was canceled. They unsummon my stuff. Magical piece grade one. What is that? With the feet of the last creature, if all grows quiet once more, you raise a hand, whipping the sweat, wiping the sweat, sweat from your brow. Marlin must be wandering somewhere in the mist. It seems your only two options are to find where she's gone or pray you run into her by chance. I want to grab whatever this is. Oh, Seth! I'm not even mad at Seth. I, in fact, like Seth. Compared to Vane. It seems like you're lackluster as ever as- What? It seems you're as lackluster as ever at finishing what you began. Dang. A frowning face, by now all too familiar, slowly draws near, and the tingling sensation that passed you for a moment grows stronger. Place your hand on your weapon. Lower your guard. You notice your fingers curling around your weapon. But relax your grip as you notice Seth is showing no signs of hostility. You carefully lower your weapon, doing all you can to conceal your anxiety and suspicion. It looks like she hasn't told you just you yet, then. You'll have to take my word that I'm not here to fight you. <laughs> Popcorn! <laughs> I suppose it would be the most expedient to explain it to you myself. Seth hesitates a little, but seems to have made up his mind as he draws near you. I was told that until recently you'd laid unconscious in the royal castle for days on end. It was during that time they decided what would become of me. No doubt the queen must have been wished to act quickly before any rumors could take root. I'm not quite certain where to start, but I'm sure someone will explain the details later, so I'll just skip to the conclusion. Officially, Seth of the Order of the Black Moon was captured, then executed for his crimes. His body was burned, and then the ashes scattered over the fields. Dang, that's brutal. How can you just say that? <laughs> As you can see, however, I still number among the living. The caveat 
I'm confined to the mist and the entrance chamber, the light of the sun forever beyond my reach. Still, I consider this light sentence, given the brutality and chaos I visited upon so many. I'm not mad at Seth. Like, other than the whole kidnapping Perrin thing, that was completely fine. Because I knew it wasn't him. I don't know what, what she's told you, but she made a deal with the queen. Not that my life would be spared. That that was the queen's own decision. I cannot have it... Huh? It cannot have been an easy decision to make, but perhaps what happened in the ravine provided ample evidence of her resolve. Or her, perhaps the queen thought that by sparing me, she could bind her to a service forever. Her fate and mine are inextricably bound. We cannot escape each other's shadow. However, in exchange for the life and service she offered as Marley, she beseeches the queen that I make atonement for my wrongs by becoming the guardian of this place. Sort of like Sailor Pluto. <laughs> Okay, or was it Sailor Saturn? No, it was Pluto, it was Pluto. She said she didn't want me to cause any more harm. Seth grows quiet for a moment and gazes far out into the mist. By the time I awoke, but correct me if I'm wrong, but Fefiata can like change depending on what you think, right? Because wasn't that what happened with Piran? Because when he first crossed the detection, it asked us where we think he is. And then, is, doesn't that change based on what you say? Because I feel like, if, I feel like it did. If you guys remember G22, wherever Vayne started his drama, I'm pretty sure that was 22. Yeah, it was 22. By the time I woke, the deal had already been struck. Needless to say, I was quite confused. Still, I can't say I have any complaints about the arrangement. I already knew my actions would have consequences, although it took me a long while to come to terms with that fact. Imagine being knocked out and then like under brainwashing your entire life and the second you remember what's going on, you have to you have to answer to what happened when you were brainwashed. Like that's rough. I'm not saying that he shouldn't receive punishment, he should. But like, dang. I was told that that you swayed Hamerick from her course, that after your confrontation, she withdrew and annulled every gas. All the power Hamerick granted me has disappeared, but so too have the restraints that came with it. And yet, I'm not sure why she would restore the memories that Fangla had sealed away. Why would Hamerick show such mercy? The, there you are. Oh. You hear a familiar voice shouting your name and turn to see Marilyn breathlessly racing towards you. It's obvious she has seen combat since the two of you were seen separated. Oh, when she sees that Seth is all with, with you, her posture reflects a nervous hesitation. She looks first at you, then Seth, then back to you again. Erm, so, did he tell you everything? I should have been the one to tell you. My apologies. I know this must be difficult for you to accept, but I've been looking for him for so long. I still remember it like it was yesterday. He's the one who saved me from the fire when I was a little girl. Thank you so much for the lurk. Oh, stars! Let me try. Let me let me try to say it. Stars. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that was bad. I'm sorry. I can't I can't say it like Nemesis. Stars. I've been looking for okay, yeah. With somber look in her eyes, she slowly weaves a story that spans from her childhood in the orphanage to the present. Div Dove tailing with Seth's account of how his fate was recently decided. Times were tough, especially early in my life, but every time I felt like I couldn't go on, I told myself I had to make it through because he saved my life. If it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't have been standing here today. He's someone very important to me, a friend I'll always look up to. I think you meant was a friend you'd look up to. In many years, distant from the boy you remember, Though his tone is blunt, his voice sounds different from them before. By the Queen's mercy, he'll live his life here at the Guardian of Bethiata, dead to the outside world. I can think of no better suited for the role. Either of our- uh, what? Either as our interests here benefit greatly from the presence of someone who can freely control the magical mist. It was also requested of me to keep an eye, up, eye on him as he watches over this place. 
I don't know. It sounds like the queen was doing some matchmaking. I don't know. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much for the hydrate. She seems flustered, not at all like her usual self. She is carefully observing you, waiting to see how you'll respond. Tell her it's not a bad arrangement. After thinking it over, you realize the decision seems to work out equitably for all parties involved. You give Myriad a small smile, trying to alley her anxiety. Oh, again, thank you for the understanding. The mist will soon grow thick once more. If we explain how things currently stand to your satisfaction, we ought to head back. Seth looks away from you and Marliad, his gaze sweeping across the landscape as he speaks. I sense a massive amount of mist flowing out somewhere. It's likely that it's likely has huh? it likely has something to do with the rifts. I heard you taking care of most of them, but clearly something is is still drawing the mist. There may still be a rift out there somewhere. I'll see if I can't locate it and determine where it leads. But in the meantime, you should let those outside know. Really? We didn't have any, we didn't find any evidence of anything like oh. At that moment you feel the thickness thick mist wash like an ocean wave over your ankles. We really should be heading back. By the by, I noticed you didn't seem as surprised by my story as I thought you might be. Could it be someone told you already? The soldiers and I ha aren't yet accustomed to reading the subtle changes and movement of the mist. I'm sure we'll improve with time. Though, especially now that we have someone to show us the way. You'll be trapped by the mist if you delay any longer, you know. Seth, who has been silently watching you, turns in the opposite direction and walks away, vanishing into the mist. Bruh. Seth. He doesn't venture outside of the mist too often. He could at least come to the entrance chamber more since he's allowed there, but he told me he didn't feel comfortable showing his face to the others. I would not either. Can't even be mad at Seth for that. Was this the right choice? As much as I wish I could be sure, I just don't know yet. My feelings are on the, uh, my feelings on all of this are still so uncertain. However, I can't deny I felt so glad when I heard his life would be spared. And so I'm going to keep watching over him to ensure that the mist never spill out into the outside world. As long as I'm around, I'm certain he won't betray us or go back into back on his word. Anyways, you must be waiting for us outside. Shall we head back? She gazes towards where self Seth disappeared, then turning to you to look at you once more. She smiles warmly. Ask her real name. Throughout Marley's story, you'd been wondering, and now, and now you decide it couldn't hurt to ask her what her original name was. Huh? Oh, right. Hmm. You know... I kind of decided to keep, leave my past buried. I've lived the majority of my life as Marlid, and that's how I'll live out the rest of it. The name I was born with will simply remain a secret. Dang, bro. You gonna treat me like that? <laughs> I'm the only one who knows it, and at least for now, I'd rather it remain that way. Marlid's expression reflects a sort of satisfied peace you've never seen from her before. I, I think I should stay here for now. Her Majesty told me to keep an eye on him as much as I can. The entrance is it too far from here, so I think I'll be able to get there without me. That you'll get there without me. I'll just make sure that our guardian is doing his job and then head back a little after. She bows politely at you. She lifts her head. You see that the uncertainty that once clouded her eyes has vanished. You turn in the direction she pointed and begin to sprint back toward the Geta. As you push through the layers of mist, you feel a refreshing sensation that grows stronger with each step. Thus rejuvenated, you silently make your way towards the entrance to the Tectune alone. I leveled up! Let's do a little bit more of Seraphic. Let's do two Seraphic. name change stern gesture let's do one more one more come on now ah, ah. this person looks funny
Talk to Piran at the entrance of Tectoon. You said you felt a strange energy inside Tectoon too, right? I remember some something similar in the report that the Ace Heroes sent to the Royal Castle. Do you think it's just just a coincidence? Piran. Oh, you made it back already? But where's her? Piran's eyes widen in surprise as he scans the getup for any signs of Myriad's emergence. Well, I guess it makes sense that she would want to talk to him privately, especially with all the effort she made to try to com trying to convince the queen. I admit, when I was first found out about it, I was surprised too. Shocked, even. I wasn't sure what I'd feel what I'd feel if I saw him again. Just that it would be awkward to say the least. Yeah, because Seth kidnapped Piran at some point. <laughs> so that, that would definitely be awkward. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not... I'm still not sure about this arrangement. Regardless of the circumstances, no one can deny that Seth did the things he did. Facts. He stirred up chaos, caused countless people to suffer, and trampled over basic human decency, all to the further the Order's agenda. I'm aware that I don't really have any say in what happens, but I also don't know if it's right to take someone's life in payment for terrible things they've done. As much as part of you might want it, you can never be sure whether the brief moment of justice will rob a person who would have changed ch changed of their opportunity to. I'm sorry. I I'm just having a hard time putting it into words. I don't even know what I'm saying is right or something tied up in guilt. But sometimes I wonder, what if Queen the Queen feels the same way I do? And that's why she ended up deciding like she did. I'm planning on staying here too, at least for the time being. You could say it's my own way of trying to atone. Besides, I think there should be someone around to confront the followers of comfort the those followers of hammerick who've been scattered all over the kingdom the help and help guide them through what's going to be a very confusing time especially since finding out that the order of the black moon were followers of hammerick is going to be a difficult truth to accept i feel totally unworthy to face them but if no one does anything the order of hammerick will just fade into history like the order of jim or derek and I guess I just don't want to see that happen, you know? If one of the world's face is allowed to disappear, it's sure to have lasting re reper repercussions somewhere else, even if we don't know what those are. The Grey One Hammerick said she, would, she was going to take a step back to observe what we'll do. After everything we went through, if we don't try to make a meaningful changes after we're, we're doing all we are doing is leaving the door open for terrible events just like these to happen again in some other form. Someday, I could never live with myself if that happens. Even if the changes we make seem small in the short term, or if it takes a long time to really achieve meaningful change, I want to contribute in, in whatever way I can. Piran affirms his commitment, his voice surprisingly full of confidence. Captain! Captain! I'm watching from Florida. Thank you. Thank you so much for the sub. And thank you so much for stopping in. The power of the mist isn't something we can afford to have falling into the hands of anyone in the outside world. The mists are a dangerous thing, unpredictable, and at least right now, uncontrollable. So how's the vacation going? It seems like the rifts we encountered were made in part. Is it vacation or work? It seems like the risks we encountered were made in part with the powers of the ma magical mists. It would have never occurred to any normal person to do something like that. Thank you so much. I have a box on my head. What happened? Did someone follow? I just got in the condo. It's a vacay. Nice. Piran absent-mindedly reaches for his necklace, his fingertips tracing its surface. Like trying to zoom in on his necklace. According to the latest reports of the Royal Castle received, there's still one place that's given off the same energy that usually <laughs> accompanies the presence of a rift. The reports from the reconnaissance team Merlin was working with on behalf of the Royal Castle. The location is referred to probably somewhere near Belvest. I also happened to hear something similar from Birched and Turkana, I mean, uh, Taitan too. Since we have no evidence that these rifts will just go away on their own, I think it's probably best if we keep an eye on that area. 
Becky, you got to Let me see. Hold on, hold on. You got to think outside of the box. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's my emote that Hunter made for me. Since we have no evidence what these risks that these risks will go away on their own. How how is the vacay going? What are you guys doing over there? Are you going to Disney <laughs> or just the beach? Since we have no evidence that these risks will just go away on their own, I think it's probably best if we keep an eye on that area. Oh, we should probably reach out to Enya again, right? We'll need her help to close the risks. No, I have the flame, but um, it's kind of intimidating to deal with the people of the Pontiff's Court. Either way, I'll update you on once I learn more. Heh, <laughs> look at me. I think I'm starting to get a hang of the things here in, in Tecton. Since Marilyn and Bacha are here, we should get together for a reunion later. Well, I'll see you later. Stay safe out there, okay? Hiram flashes a beaming smile, then bows his head in a gesture of thanks for all you've helped him through. It seems like wherever you go, you keep hearing mentions of a strange energy around Belfast. Something about these accounts doesn't sit right with you, but for now, you decide to par depart from the gateway to Tectoon. Are we talking about Compass? We're going to the beach and then going to see some of the cover band to chill. Cover band to chill? What is cover band? I'm sorry. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> to see some cover band to chill. Is that like what? Like I was, I just wanted to see if he was. <laughs> Aww, I feel sad to see you go so soon. We'll see each other next time. Oh, he <laughs> hit me. <laughs> Delayed reaction, but yes. And thank you so much for the follow, Jay. That's why the box fell on my head earlier. Is a band that performs other people's music. Oh, nice. Wow, I feel dumb now. Yeah, I could have. <laughs> I could have put that together. <laughs> okay, let's see who we talk to. Go to Sing Men Planes. Segman. Wait, did the name change? I thought it was Seng Meng. But now Seg Sen Meng? Or have I just been saying it wrong my entire life? Yeah, I was wondering about that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I have a box or like, there's like three things, like a pie, a box, or like a heart that fall if somebody follows me. It's sort of how I can keep track of what's going on. person has a cart. Why does she remind me of Jessie? Like from Toy Story? Is this Jessie? Water. Let me look up a picture of Jessie really quick. Jessie. Toy Story. She's giving serious Jessie vibes. It's definitely not perfect, but I think it's very close. Missing only like the cowboy, cowboy, like what is this? Cow print? Cow print, um, pants. But I think that would be hard to find in Mabby anyway. The top is pretty spot on actually. Quite Jessie vibes. Yes, literally. But let me walk away from her so that, like I don't look nosy. <laughs> Check the letter Merlin sent. It's taped, wrapped, and sealed to an absurd degree. Someone is very concerned about others opening. This is clearly the work of Merlin. What did you write this time? How are you, Jay? Yeah, that looks quite Jesse to me, right? It's pretty spot on. Does he tear open the... Let me check who this is. Oji Kashi... Oh, yeah! We know Oji Kashira. And Solus, too. Solus is here, too. Cat named Woody. I know these people. As you tear open the envelope, an odd sensation spreads rapidly from the fingertips through the rest of your body. Looking through the envelope, you find nothing, no letter, nor even a slip of paper. Even stranger is a hazy tingling that lingers over your body. What's going on? Was this message not sent by Merlin? Could this be a trap? Merlin! I'm just gonna say what's going on. Suddenly, a blinding light obscures your vision. You're left feeling weightless. 
as though you might be blown aloft by the gust of wind. Yeah, we were pie, yes. Treasure hunter. Actually, it's almost time for me to raid out, so I'll open the last of the gachas that I have. And yeah, they must be talking about Kambas. Where am I? Oh, not Kambas. Kambas is over here. Very close, though. My goal for this one is Seraphic. Like, the Seraphic stuff. So, a monochrome pa dye pack, that's fine. Talent reset capsule. I don't know anybody who needs a talent reset capsule. Okay, the Daydream staff. Repair. Oh, no! No seraphic rip. And thank you. Hopefully this last gacha is a cat. Specifically the cat that looks like my cat. Yes! Oh. Oh, so close, man. So close. It was a chair. It's a chair selection box. Oh! It's still cute. Still cute. I definitely want the one that looks like my cat, Siamese. Let's try it. Right. I tricked myself, honestly. Not in sitting, I feel relaxed. If I- can I dye this? Can I dye the eyes blue? No, it's not dyeable. Cause my cat has blue eyes. Right. Sadly, I couldn't get the whistle, but it's okay. Cause I did get the cute little cat- this cat instead. But very cute. I like it. Alright. And that being said, I'm going to raid out. I think- Anybody playing Mabby really? So Bard Guy, Bard Guy is playing Mabby right now. Thank you so much for everyone, and thank you so much for stopping by, Captain. I'll see you guys next time on Wednesday, on Wednesday, what? On Wednesday, 4.30 p.m. EST, and then I also, I'm starting to post the other times that I go live to. Um, it's like, 4.30 EST, 3.30 CT, and then 1.30 PDT. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.